this is brine gpt and that turns thoughts into text on screen this it can take brine wave eeg and it can translate into sentence like look at this demo so you can have like eeg here and then it can basically translate the result so you can see so it says afternoon you will cappuccino extra shot and that is exactly what they are showing in this demo as well so if you see this particular demo you would notice that the person is thinking silently and the model or whatever the technology they've got what they're calling as brain gpt can translate into actual text so this is i'm not sure where they showed this demo what kind of um, environment they created this demo but this is like super ridiculously impressive about what is happening it is a non invasive technology which means you don't have to put chips inside your brain like neural link is doing and it can help you translate directly the text from brain waves into text um, from brain waves or eeg into text and the other leap forward that this technology or this paper is doing is it does not require an eye marker so typically when you want to translate eeg into words you would do this eye markers to have this annotation at the end of every word or something so you have brain waves at the end of uh, like for example let's say i would say uh, it is a solid then i would like blink my eye or like have some kind of eye marker that would combine the eeg with the eye marker to do the annotation so that the 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 system whatever you are using knows where to split the words and then use that into translation but this technology does not need this this paper does not need this and that is one of the main innovations that they are bringing in now jumping directly into the paper they are calling this as d wave discrete eeg waves encoding for brain dynamics to text translation now if you see what this paper is doing is the paper tackles a very important issue the important issue is uh, that instead of using an eye marker they are going to do directly eeg into text so d wave that integrates discrete encoding sequences into open vocabulary eeg to text translation tasks d wave uses a quantized variational encoder so if if, if this name sounds quite familiar auto variational encoder uh, this is something that uh, like stable diffusion kind of models have been using so you would have seen this kind of encoder system and in fact when i show you the architecture you can closely relate this to stable diffusion or how stable diffusion models have been trained so they are using quantized variational encoder to derive discrete codex encoding so now what is this discrete code simple terms you can assume this is like a token in a sentence so if you have a large language model like chat gpt the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take all these texts and then you're going to split the text into tokens that you can feed into the model so that the model can learn what to what to predict next so that is what you would do if you're building a large language model the same way what they are doing here is they're taking this eeg signal and then they are creating a discrete codex representation so because of this discrete codex representation that they are creating they have two advantages one it realizes the translation on draw waves without marker by introducing a text eeg contrastive alignment training once again contrastive alignment training is very similar like what stable diffusion uses so you have both modalities one you have text the other one you have like whatever modality in that case stable diffusion cases you have the image and in this particular case you have got this waves so you can use this both and then create um like a contrastive approach where the model would try to learn from whatever it is matching whatever it is not matching so the model knows okay this wave means this word this wave means this word that's how like stable diffusion does with image and they have done a um, similar thing with uh, the eeg and it alleviates the inference cost by individual differences in eeg waves through an invariant discrete codex with or without markers so typically what they have said is like when you use these markers these two eeg waves can have interference like between these two that can like mess up your translation and because this uses this discrete codex that is kind of avoiding that kind of a situation where you even with or without markers it it manages to do go through with this interference the model claims to have uh, an improvement over previous baseline which was 40.1 31.7 on uh, the benchmark called BLEU and ROGEF so from that baseline now the model has achieved 41.35 and 33.71 
before we move forward with this paper, I want to still give you a couple of details. This is the time to remind you that there was an issue on this GitHub repository where you can see that as the baseline methods make a new claim of evaluation, we are investigating this problem. So you can see that the baseline that they use, like the one of the base models that they used for this particular project has got an issue. So somebody new speech came here and then raised a new issue saying that this, this um, particular um, code had an error. So the error was uh, one of the ways that they were generating the text was using some kind of a teacher approach. So you can see which was using teacher forcing implicitly to give more accurate answers. And when the code was replaced with model.generate, which is uh, something that people typically use, the responses were not as accurate as it was before and the baseline could be dropping. And that also means that this paper, which relies on that paper could have an issue. And that is something that even the repo, like the D wave repo, you can see here, they can, they have said that because of this, they are uh, examining like how the baseline methods and how it has changed. Uh, so I'm not claiming to say that this is the best one that you have got um, ever, but still I found it quite interesting about how they went about the entire process. So with that disclaimer, if you see, if this is the EEG waves, like this is the EEG waves that are coming, there is a ground truth, there is a predicted truth. For example, if the ground truth says, Bob attended the University of Texas Austin, where he graduated Phi Beta Kappa with a bachelor's degree in Latin American studies in 1973, taking only two and a half years to complete his work and obtain general excellent grades. You can see that this, this text is the ground truth. This is the original brain waves and this is the predicted one was the University of California at Austin in where he studied in Beta Kappa in a degree of degree in history, American studies in 1975 and the one class a half years to complete and was an excellent degrees. Now you know why it is like somewhere around 41% because this is still not like, you know, your chat GPT level, we are always used to having like 80%, 90%, you know, beyond human beings. This is not at that level. Even when it is not at this level, like if you imagine like what is happening here, you would truly appreciate this because you are literally, literally taking like brain waves. Like you just like put this entire thing on a human being and it has the capability to actually translate thinking into text. The problem would be there like when people start using it on anybody who has got like coma or you know people who cannot speak and then they believe that whatever comes out of this AI is true like the problem is there then and there but as long as this is a tech this is a technology that you are just testing I think this is super impressive. Now if you go about like how did they build this entire thing you can see this architecture so if you see this architecture there is like brain waves, they have taken both, one the raw waves, the other one is the eye fixated, the sliced waves. So you can see the tokenized kind of one. And uh, they have used the transformer architecture from the F2 Vec2, um, which was like originally developed by Meta AI that was used to translate voice signals into text. So they're kind of using similar approach. And as you can see here, they have gone into like a lot of different details about how they went about building this uh, technology. One important thing is like you can see how they got idea of a discrete codex, which was initially uh, ad, uh, proposed in VQVAE. VAE here stands for variable auto encoder, which is something like I said, like being used in stable diffusion and a lot of other models these days. So they have used that and ultimately at the end what happens is uh, that is being projected into like a 512 uh, features like 512, 512, 512 and that goes into transformer encoders and that is what is creating this um, discrete codex and uh, that finally goes inside a decoder. They are using BART model for that. That finally converts that into text. So they are using two kind of large language models here. One is a BART, which is a bi-directional large language model. And then they are using, I think, chat GPT or some kind of model that is just a left to right model. So they've used two kinds of large language model. And overall, I think, I honestly feel that this is an impressive work where you 
don't understand the domain a lot like i don't understand this domain a lot i'm not a neuroscience specialist but uh, they have gone into like really good details about how they are implementing like for example um they have used like 56 tokens each with uh, 840 embedding size and a lot of other details um especially the one interesting uh, detail that i kind of liked it is they have described how they went about building this discrete codex which they are saying like one of the important advantages for example D wave encodes EEG waves into discrete codex aiming for a large language friendly representation. So we all know like you need tokens for large language models. So they're trying to do that. A very interesting observation here is that when they increase the codex size, like imagine in your mind that this is like the context window, which we are usually used to in large language models like chat GPT. So 100K, 1000K, 2K. So these are like the codex context window sizes that we are used to it. So here they're saying that when they try to check the performance, like performance of the model performance here, when they try to increase the codex size from 1000 to 8000, they didn't see huge change in the result. Like in fact, a codex size of 2042 yielded better or the highest BLEU score while uh, the rogue score just slightly improved with the larger sizes and there was no clear evidence than increasing codex size consistently. So this is quite surprising to be honest. What we have seen in large language models and like larger codex uh, context window helps you in uh, getting more knowledge of in context memory and that has helped large language models to perform better. But in this case it has not and um, that was like one surprising thing for me. Maybe I'm like understanding it wrong but but that is something that I, like I really found it quite surprising. Overall I think this is a very interesting paper to read if you are interested in uh, combining a lot of different domains like large language model, deep neural networks, um, neuroscience and uh, you know the clip architecture, the contrastive learning architecture. If you have any question let me know in the comment section otherwise I'm not sure like how true it is how easy it is but this is truly mind-blowing that people have non-invasive technologies to read brain signals i'll link the video the article and the paper and the previous paper that they'll release open vocabulary eeg2 text decoding and uh, let me know in the comment